Outdoor Travel Channel with Robin Sherry. Hi guys, this is Rob from the Outdoor Travel Channel. And yes, we're going to be cooking again today on the Traeger. But <laughs> this will be a little different. This time we're going to make jerky. So what makes this jerky a little different is we're using, down here I'll show you, we're using linden broil. And a lot of people may not know this, but um, it was on sale at Safeway. So what I do is I go to the butcher and they'll, this guy actually hand cut it for me to make me really nice strips for making jerky. So the other thing I'm going to do different than I normally do is I'm going to avoid water when I make my brine and I'm going to heat it up and then introduce my meat to it so it will soak in more. So my replacement for water in my brine will be uh, beef broth. <laughs> so it's a little different for me and what I'm trying to avoid is a lot of salt. So I'm not going to put a lot of salt in the brine and I'll go through what I'm putting into my brine. I don't have an exact recipe. It's just something I like to use. But I do like to use uh, a brisket brine or a, uh, it's a sauce and uh, for the flavor. But I'll be adding a lot of things like garlic and uh, some other things. So I'll show you how I do that. But what I'm gonna do is heat up my brine first and get make sure everything really dissolves well and then put my uh, linden broil in it and then I'm going to let it sit overnight. So this is a two day process. Today is making the brine and then letting my jerky uh, soak overnight. Then we're going to cook it on the Traeger. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, so we're getting close to making our brine. So I got a lot of ingredients here. So I have basically some salt and pepper. Gotta have that. I like the pepper, it gives it a little bit of a spunk. And then I've got a few um, favorite flavors I like, like the Traeger beef. And at a garlic festival I went to, they have this really good garlic mixture seasoning that I got. And I'm gonna add that in. We're gonna use some of the Worcester sauce, uh, a little bit of garlic powder, well, I'll probably garlic salt, I'll probably not use that. And a little bit of onion salt, just a smidgen. Uh, I will be adding thyme and rosemary and then instead of water I want to use beef broth so I have beef broth here and this is my main ingredient which is a brisket uh, allegro you can kind of see it here it's a uh, sauce that really gives uh, to me I like the flavor of it so before I even introduce the meat I'm going to put all this stuff into our pot here and try to avoid, I usually would use water to make up the difference because this is a lot of meat. This is probably a good three or four pounds of meat here. So this thing's going to be full and I need to strain it. So after I warm it up, strain it, I'll put it into a bowl, put my meat into it and let it sit overnight and it should be, <laughs> it should have such good flavor. Then on top of that we're going to cook it in the Traeger which will give it a smoky Hey, so it's going to be awesome. So let's get to work. All right, so to get started here, I am going to introduce a little bit of salt, not as much as I would normally. A smidgen, because a lot of these other ingredients, uh, which I'm also going to add soy sauce, which is not here yet, but I will get it. Uh, good old pepper. Pepper gives it a good little bit of zing. <coughs> my Traeger beef seasoning. We're gonna have to get a little more serious than that. All right, a little bit of my garlic festival yummy here. This is where I'm gonna get most of my garlic taste. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of I'm a whole lot. <laughs> a little bit of uh, rosemary leaves. That's why we're going to have to strain this when we're done. Your Chester sauce. And 
this is, I believe, pretty salty too. It has a little salt in it, so I don't have to go too nuts on the salt. And of course, I'm using onion salt. I'm not gonna go too heavy on that. And of course, a little garlic salt, salt but very light, because the other ingredients I've used already. And my diluting will be done with beef broth. Hoping I don't have to add water. And this wasn't a full container. And of course I'm gonna use my brine brisket sauce here that I'm trying out. Shake it up a little bit. Smells good. And last but not least, <laughs> I need some soy sauce. <clears throat> so this is another reason why I didn't add a lot of salt in the beginning, because soy sauce is famous for being salty too. All right, so what I'm gonna do is probably add a little bit of water. <laughs> I can't avoid it. I'm going to add a little water to this. Um, maybe a cup, a couple of cups. I add like two glasses of water to this. It's just, it's not. Well, the reason I want more liquid in there is because once I add this meat into it, it's going to take up the volume of it and I need to handle all this meat. So I was trying to avoid water, but <laughs> not going to happen. So the next thing we're going to do is put this up to a boil. Then I'm going to strain it into a big bowl, cover it with tin foil. I add the meat, cover it with tin foil, and let it sit overnight. Alrighty, so I'm going to take this up to a boil. Then I'm going to simmer it. And then I'm going to uh, strain it, put it into a separate bowl. I'm going to use, I'm going to try to use this bowl, put my meat in it, and also cover it once it cools a little bit and put it in the fridge overnight. And then tomorrow we cook. So the quick thing I wanted to tell you about is I usually make my jerky in a dryer. And I've always enjoyed doing it that way. So this is the first time I used a Traeger. However, the recipes are the same. I've always used the brine and let it sit overnight. And you can make all kinds of great flavors if you want teriyaki or Cajun or whatever you like. So there's no, I don't think, I wouldn't say doing jerky is exact science. <laughs> so uh, when we start cooking tomorrow, I will take three to four hours on the smoke setting on the Traeger. And so, we're going to have to, after about the third hour, some, your meat doesn't always get cut the way you want it, so your thicker pieces will take longer to cook. And uh, so we'll be kind of picking through the meat towards the third to fourth hour and taking it out early uh, because some of it will get done before the others. And to me it's really important, I like to put them in bags, I let them cool before, <laughs> I don't want to put it in the fridge when they're still hot. But as soon as they're cool enough to go in the refrigerator, try to get the air out of the bags. And what this makes is a very flavorful, tender, plain old yummy <laughs> uh, uh, jerky. The other thing I do a little bit different with my jerky is I don't trim the meat uh, or the fat off the meat when I cook it. I only do that after I'm done cooking it because I feel that some of the flavors from the fat still will help give the go into the meat. The other thing I'm doing different this time is because I'm boiling my brine and I'm going to introduce the meat to it when it's warm, I'm kind of figuring it opens the pores a little bit more to the meat and bring those flavors into it. So we're at a boil, I'm shutting it down. 
gonna let that simmer for a little bit, strain it, put the meat in when it's still warm. I don't want it exactly boiling hot, I don't want to cook the meat. And But I, I'm thinking that the pores of the meat should open up a little bit and the flavors of the brine should go into it. So that's a little different for something I've done before, so we'll try it out. All right, so we're gonna strain this. So I'm going to let that sit a little longer and to cool down and then I'm going to introduce our meat to it here in a moment. And once again this is London broil that's been cut for me. I'm not trimming the fat on it at all. There is fat on it. Uh, I'm going to do that after it's cooked. So there you go. Okay, so make sure you wash up before you touch all your meat and then make sure you wash up after you're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove some of this because it's too much. And so I brought a measuring thing here to put my extra brine in in case I want to add it back. And I'm going to stir it before I put it in. Make sure that nothing will settle to the bottom. It's still kind of warm but it's going to cool off quite a bit as I add the meat in and then it'll be ready to sit overnight. Next we're going to start adding our meat. This is USD, USDA choice beef. It's a London borrow. And to show you what I have here, let me turn my camera a little bit is I had them cut it for me ahead of time. So my pieces are a nice, perfect size for making <laughs> beef jerky. So once again, I'm leaving the fat on. I'm cutting it off after I'm done. Because uh, I just think it adds more flavor and some of it's actually really yummy. So, what we do now is make sure they're separated and so the brain gets on all sides of the meat and uh, see I do have a couple thicker pieces and those will take a little longer to cook in the Traeger and then of course I got some thinner pieces so yeah never consistent I'm kind of used to that So here we go. Here's our brine. Sit 24 hours. Then we're gonna be ready to cut. So one last thing is this extra brine I have here. If you're planning on cooking like a roast in a couple of days or something, that'd be really good for injection cooking. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be doing injection cooking for a couple of days. However, uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is we bought these bowls at Costco and they all come with their lids and so uh, there's different sizes you can get and I love them because you got these lids that come with them and they're very uh, they stand up really well in the uh, dishwasher so there you go the brain's ready to go we'll start cooking tomorrow well hello guys it's the next morning exciting day today we're gonna make beef jerky so this is gonna be kind of messy because we'll be dripping stuff all over so with the Traeger, I'm going to load the meat onto the grill before I start it because it's going to take a while and it's going to be messy and I don't want the grill to be hot. So let's pull it out of the fridge. Okay, so this is our finished product for before we start cooking. It's all been, oh man, does that <laughs> smells good. So uh, once again, I'm not stripping off the fat till after I'm done cooking it and I'm doing that because I want to get extra flavor if I can get it so anyway let's start loading the Traeger so a couple things I'm going to do before we get started make sure my grills are cleaned out cooking before next thing we're going to do is make sure and put a little bit of cooking oil on the, on the grill here 
One more reminder before we get started is I'm going to wash my hands really well, load the, the jerky on the grill, and wash my hands again because I was dealing with raw meat. So, And <laughs> I can tell you right now, we're going to have a mess here. So I'm going to put some paper towels down for the dripping. And then we'll be ready to start cooking. All right, so now we've got everything set up. We're going to be dripping a lot. <laughs> And my dog is hoping I spill. And uh, by the way, this is Cinder. If you haven't met her before, we're gonna start loading the trigger. And once it's loaded, then we'll get it fired up. Alrighty, so we got this thing full. Of course, I've got more meat than I have room. So one of the things I'm going to be buying in the future is I can actually buy a second stage um, rack for my Traeger. And that will allow me to put more strips of jerky in my Traeger in the future. <laughs> but live and learn. So, <laughs> as you can see, Traeger's full. We're going to put it on smoke mode. And we're going to run this for three to four hours. Uh, all I have to do now is turn my knob to smoking it will hold around 160 170 degrees and we check on them every hour so here we go <laughs> once again with the trigger you leave it open let it fire up get it smoking make sure everything's started uh, if you don't give it a chance to fire up properly I've actually had an error before because I didn't give it a chance to get lit. <laughs> so anyway, take the time to make sure it gets lit. Give it five to ten minutes, it'll start smoking. The temperature will start raising. That's when you close the lid and it goes to work. For those of you who might be curious about what I'm smoking with today, is I'm using the Traeger Alder pellet. And this is it right here. <laughs> and Alder is one of my favorites. So, some people like to use mesquite, there's hickory out there, there's all kinds of flavors, apple, anyway, but me, I like the older. Alright guys, it's been about almost an hour and a half, we're going to take a little sneak peek and see how things are looking. Oh my god. that look good or what? So what I'm going to probably do is... Even though they do cook pretty evenly, I'm going to turn some of these and uh, just make sure they're getting cooked off. Uh... <laughs> Man, that looks good. Look at this! Awesome. Nice smoky rings on these things. This is going to be really good. Anyway, I'm going to turn some of these and then uh, let, let them cook. Every once in a while you get a little surprise. I got this thin little piece here. It's like as thin as a piece of bacon. And it looks cooked. And so I'm gonna test it. It was my first test. Oh man, really good flavor. Yeah, and it's just a thin piece. So that's a good part about making jerky is you can kind of test it as it goes along. But you do want to check all your strips because some are thicker than others. Some will get done sooner. So for the next hour and a half or two, I'm going to probably check every half hour. If I think something's done, I'm going to pull it out and start pulling it. And, uh, oh man, good stuff, guys. Alrighty, guys, we're getting to the end of this video. We are at the just over two hour mark. And believe it or not, some of the strips are already done and I pulled them and I'll show them to you. But Here's the ones I have and I've been turning them and they're still cooking. <laughs> they look really good. They smell really good too. Uh, but I just pulled some in here. We'll go ahead and bring you in the kitchen. So the ones I've pulled out already, I'm letting them cool in a bowl right here. They're uh, a little thinner pieces and so they got cooked earlier. So that's why it's really important to monitor about every 20 to 30 minutes check and see if some of them got done before the others because it's hard to get meat cut consistent but anyway uh 
my little taste test. What I really like about this recipe, it did not turn out too salty. I do not like real salty stuff. Other people do, but definitely wonderful flavor. So, oh, good stuff. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. We're cooking with alder uh, in the Traeger, making jerky with lemon broil. Came out real good. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Hey, we hope you enjoyed our beef jerky show today. I know it was a little long, sorry. Please take the time to subscribe and watch some of our prior videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye now.